So uh, thanks for coming. This, uh, this is not an introductory presentation to SALT. That said, uh, I'm going to uh, quickly go over some SALT basics just so we've got kind of our terminology and, and base understanding uh, uh, squared away. Um, I'll try not to spend uh, too much time on it. So, <clears throat> SALT internals. Uh, obviously you have the SALT master. You, it's, a, it's a daemon uh, you run on a server. Um, that, uh, that server requires two ports that are, uh, that are open, one for a pub sub and one for uh, a dedicated reply channel. You, uh, you've got minions, um, uh, you've got the minion daemon that you install on all the servers that you want to manage. Um, they connect to the master, so you don't have to have any ports on the minions open um, at all. Uh, I mean, uh, you probably want to use it for something that requires a port, but in any case, nothing additional. Um, and uh, the, the minion connects to the master and just listens for pubs. So uh, in the minion config, you can see here, you, uh, you just tell it where the master is and, uh, and you're done. So uh, execution modules, they contain all of the functionality of SALT. So um, uh, if you go to the SALT documentation, not everybody knows about this link. It's, uh, it's a little esoteric, but I highly recommend uh, hitting this, the Python module index. Um, if you ever have to look anything up. This is uh, divided into the different module types that uh, the SALT has. Um, so these are all of the execution modules. Uh, all of the execution modules are, uh, are called modules in SALT. It's a bit of an overloaded term. We're working on cleaning up the, uh, the terminology. But uh, modules are execution modules. Um, and uh, it's, it's worth, uh, worth a look if, uh, if you want to know any functionality that exists in SALT or you just want to look something up real quick. This is the definitive list of, of all modules in SALT. So um, I just showed you the, the execution modules uh, and I'll be talking about state modules uh, briefly. Um, and they, uh, they're here. So this is uh, an index and uh, the index is based on uh, module type. So execution modules contain all of the functionality. If you want to get an IP address from a minion, you, uh, you run the, uh, the network.interfaces uh, module, and that returns the, uh, the, the IP address. Um, if you want to uh, just see who's up, <coughs> that, uh, that lives here too. So then state modules, uh, oh, excuse me, here's a, an example uh, that I imagine you all have seen. So you run the salt command, you specify who you want to run that command on, and network.interfaces. So uh, state modules. Uh, wrap execution modules. So they do a before check to see if anything needs to be done. They, uh, if you're running with test equals true, then that's where they stop. Um, they, uh, they then call out to execution modules to actually do the work. So if, uh, if you're installing Apache, for example, the execution module um, that you can run from the CLI is the one that's doing the actual work, so it's the same code. The state module just does the before check and the after check. And uh, once that's done, then it returns what has changed um, so that you can see that uh, in, in your output. So uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. You've got a top file here with a base environment. So all, uh, all machines that match uh, the, uh, the host name web have uh, uh, execute this, uh, this SLS file. This SLS file specifies that you just want the HTTP package installed. And uh, that's, that's it, simple. So <clears throat> salt is fast. SALT is, you guys have probably heard this a few times today, um, SALT is uh, a new approach to infrastructure management. It's not just Puppet or Chef, um, but in Python. It's entirely different. It's architected completely different. And uh, it is fast. So let's talk about why. So at the core, SALT is fast because of 0MQ. 0MQ um, is a networking library um, it, it, it doesn't have anything in, uh, in common with uh, like a full AMQP broker that you might be familiar with, like uh, Active, uh, ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ. Um, it uh, can compete with them, but uh, it's, it's an entirely different thing. So you can think of it as kind of like a, a Unix um, a socket uh, library. You, uh, you, you, you bind to a port, and, uh, and uh, then you can just do uh, various things on that port. You can listen for uh, connections on that port. And the magic of 0MQ is you can set up various topologies on that port, uh, using that port, to, uh, to facilitate different kinds of communication. And we'll talk about what SALT uses. Uh, in addition to that, uh, SALT uh, packs all of, its, uh, all of its commands, all of which are very small, uh, by the way, um, using message pack. So, uh, so the communication on the wire is very, very tiny and very, very fast. Um, let's see. 
So you guys have seen, uh, th those of you who have played with salt, uh, I'm assuming most uh, in this room have seen, you know, when you run salt at the, at the command line, you get a response back pretty, pretty instantly. Um, salt, um, salt has several tricks that it does to, uh, to give the appearance of, of uh, synchronous behavior, but it's all asynchronous. Um, so it does that using PubSub. So the minions connect to the master and they listen for pubs. The master sends out a command using a pub. Um, it's, uh, it's asynchronous, like I said, and uh, the minions do all the work. They, they get that command, they determine whether or not that command applies to them. And if it does, then they execute on that command. So everything is local, the master isn't doing anything uh, at that point. So at the CLI, you run the salt command, you, uh, you fire off this job on all of your minions, all of the, the minions that, uh, that should be running that job start executing on that job. And, uh, and then at this point, the master is just waiting for returns on this dedicated reply channel that I mentioned. So, um, so, uh, so that means the, the master itself can be very, very lightweight and, uh, and uh, all of the CPU load and processing is, uh, is pushed off you know, onto all of your minions. So, let's see. Oh, uh, sorry. I was going to talk about um, uh, what uh, what it, what, you're, what you're actually seeing at the at the CLI. So the CLI has a few tricks that it does to uh, to give the appearance of, of synchronous behavior. Um, you guys have seen the timeout option, um, or if you've run a really long command, or maybe if you've got uh, a key uh, that you've accepted accepted for a minion and uh, that minion isn't currently responding. Um, or just the command that you uh, that you ran is taking too long to respond. You'll uh, you'll hit the timeout. So salt has a global uh, timeout of five seconds. So if all of your minions don't return in five seconds, um, or rather the CLI will output what has returned um, in the five seconds uh, for that that timeout. Now salt has various tricks that it does to to figure out when all minions that are going to return do return, and uh, and so that's what you see at the CLI. Uh, when, you know, say you run a test.ping and you get that response back instantly. Um, salt, salt is making an educated guess about who's going to return. And when it sees returns for all of those guys, then it just outputs to the, to the, to the CLI. There are certain commands in Salt, however, that Salt cannot guess um, who is going to return. And uh, so for there, you, you hit the global timeout um, or long running commands, like I said. So. Um, <clears throat> What, uh, what Salt is actually doing when you fire a command is it creates a job ID on the master, and uh, that's, a, that's just a folder on the file system, and, uh, and uh, then it's done, then, then it's just waiting for replies. So as minions are working on that, they, uh, they, they reply back in this dedicated communi communication channel with that job ID and, uh, and the response, and uh, that response, that result, goes into this folder. So that's how Salt knows when uh, minions return. Um, so, uh, so at the uh, at the the Python API level, for example, you can um, you can fire off an execution and just get a job ID back, and uh, and you're done. Or uh, you can get uh, you can get the same thing at the CLI. If you fire off a job and just immediately hit Control C, Salt will output a little message with the job ID. And so that's what's going on. Salt has created that job ID folder and is just waiting for replies. Any questions about that? Okay, so let's talk about minion data. So there's various ways to share data between minions. Um, and uh, that's what we'll be talking about uh, for most of this presentation. Um, since Salt has this always on high speed communication layer between the master and all of these minions, what, is that, what does that mean? What can Salt do that other tools that are similar to Salt uh, can't do uh, because of that? So. One of them is uh, shared data between minions. So, uh, so there's a spectrum of, of uh, data available to, uh, to Salt. So uh, on the left here, we've got uh, live data. And uh, you can access live data from on one minion, uh, from one minion to another minion um, using the peer interface. And I'll go over that in just a minute. Um, you can uh, access recent data using Salt Mine, which is in uh, Not.15, which uh, is newly released. Um, or you can fetch historic data using a returner, so using, um, using returners to store data in some data store somewhere, and uh, I'll get to that. So let's talk about the peer interface. The peer interface is a way to, 
um, whitelist one minion for running commands on uh, through salt. It uh, it still goes through the master. So if you if you enable the peer interface and you run an execution command from one minion, it still gets routed through the master as normal. But the the, the master just reroutes those replies back to the minion that ran it. So for example, this is how you would configure uh, the peer interface. You edit your master config, you edit the peer section, and uh, what we're doing here is uh, we're specifying all of our hosts that start with LB. Uh, so I'll, I'll come back to this example a few times in this presentation, but uh, say like you have uh, a few load balancers that you want to uh, configure on the fly. Um, so you, uh, you, wh what you're doing here is you're saying anybody whose host name starts with LB, they can run the network.interfaces command. So then from that minion, they can run this command and get the response back from all of the other minions. So <coughs> this, this is allowing, now this is a reg regular expression, so you can, uh, uh, and as is this. So you can say, you know, all minions can run all things. You can say this minion can run all things, or you can say, you know, this very specific minion can r run this very specific thing. And this is a list, so you can add multiple things there. But uh, what you are doing is you are whitelisting uh, that you trust this minion to, to gather data from these other minions. So be mindful of what data you're allowing it to gather. So this is an example of how you would use that in an SLS file. So say like you have um, an HA proxy um, uh, service that's running on uh, a couple of your minions and uh, you want to populate the HA proxy config file with the IP addresses and the server names for, uh, for all of your minions. So what this looks like is uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Jinja. Sorry for the slide, it's a little hard to unpack, but uh, uh, for, uh, so it's grabbing server and IP from the output of this command. So we're doing publish.publish. .publish. That's, the, that's the interface to, to the, uh, the peer interface. You're saying I'm, uh, I'm targeting all of the host names who uh, start with web. So in this case, I want all of my web servers. And uh, I'm running this command, network.interfaces. I'm specifying at zero is the argument. And, um, and I'm uh, getting those back in, uh, in, in, in uh, groups of two. So, uh, so what that lets us do is in this for loop, it lets us output this, uh, this, this line here, appropriate for HA proxy, server, and then the server name, the IP address of the server, and then we're hard coding port 80 and uh, specifying that HA proxy should check it, um, health check it. So, uh, so every time you run uh, state.highState, state, or every time you run whatever state this, uh, this, this, this block of code is in, um, it grabs that list of, uh, of currently available web servers. Any questions? Okay. So let's talk about salt mine. Brand new. Um, it is similar to the peer interface uh, in, in the end result, but uh, what it does is it has the master running this command at a scheduled interval and collecting that information. So the way you configure this is uh, by editing the salt master or the salt minion uh, config and uh, you, you add this uh, mine functions uh, uh, block and uh, you specify what command you want to run and any arguments to that command. And uh, you can also specify the interval. By default, it's uh, 60 um, minutes. So, um, so, uh, so this can go in either the master config, and, uh, and this command will get run on all minions at this interval, or it can go in the minion config for just the minions you want to, uh, to, to, to be returning this data. Um, at the moment, if you put it in both places, they will step on each other. Uh, but that, uh, that will be, uh, I believe there's a ticket for it uh, that's on our radar to, uh, to fix to uh, um, have a better internal mechanism in SALT for, uh, for merging dictionaries, merging these configuration dictionaries. Uh, but at the moment, keep in mind that they, they'll step on each other. Um, and the way you use SALT mine is very, very similarly. So almost identical, except uh, the command that we're running is mine.get. And uh, we're specifying again the host names that we want that information from, and everything else is uh, is identical. So let's talk about returners now. So a bit of a different beast than uh, the peer interface or um, or a salt mine. Um, <clears throat> when 
When you run a command in salt, the return from that command is just output to your terminal. If you specify a returner, either here on the CLI, like, um, uh, like this, you can do dash dash return and the name of the returner. Um, or if you specify it in uh, your config file, for example, uh, what that does is that also takes the return from that command that you've run and it puts it into a data store of your choosing. Now, uh, Salt has a variety of uh, returner modules. Yeah. And uh, they are very, very easy to add. They, uh, they, they tend to be very, very small. Um, the function to actually write the data is, uh, for Redis is uh, somewhere in the ballpark of 10 lines of code, give or take. So if, uh, if your favorite data store isn't in here or if you don't like the default behavior, it's easy to customize. So uh, you, can, uh, you can add the connection information uh, to either the master config or the minion config. And uh, the reason you, knew, you, you do this is because the minions write to returners directly. So you run a command, all of your minions then contact the server that's specified here with, uh, with that return. Um, so, you know, if you've got a ton of minions, uh, you might want to be aware of uh, all of those minions are going to be slamming uh, your, your database at the, uh, at the same time but unless you're running a very, very large infrastructure, it probably won't be a problem. Um, so uh, the reason I'm uh, mentioning returners in the context of uh, the peer interface or uh, salt mine is because there's kind of an interesting technique um, that isn't terribly useful now that we have salt mine and, uh, and uh, with the peer interface as well. But um, we've seen this uh, from our community uh, in the past. So. Uh, I'm not going to talk about pillar in this presentation, but uh, pillar is a way to specify data on the master that is specific to minions. So, uh, so it's basically just uh, you know a bucket of uh, of you know lists and dictionaries um, that uh, that minions can can pull from. So, uh, one of the cool things about pillar is you can you can see that uh, that pillar database, if you will, uh, via the external pillar modules. So again, uh, arbitrary data stores. It's, it's easy to get data from Salt into some arbit uh, arbitrary data store, and it's easy to get that same data out of Salt in various fashions from, again, arbitrary data stores. So one of, uh, one of the uh, a guy in our community set up uh, a returner to collect this information from commands that he was running into a data store, and then he would pull that data back into Pillar so that it was available to all minions. Um, yet again, so uh, kind of a, a circle. So uh, this is uh, basically the, the workflow that he did. Pardon. So um, this is just an example of running a command and specifying a, a returner. Um, and um, I'll, uh, I'll gloss over how you fetch the data using a, a custom uh, external pillar module. But uh, again, it's, it's simple. You can do so in uh, just a handful of lines of code. And uh, so then if you were to use that data, um, going back to the, uh, the example you've seen twice already, um, you can grab that data using pillar.get. So um, here we're, we're just grabbing it out of this data structure here, and uh, that's kind of up to us. So if we write that external pillar module, we can store that data however we want, and uh, that's, that's what this is assuming, and that's what this is grabbing. So again, a way to uh, uh, fetch a, a live list of web servers, or live-ish in this case. Any questions? Please do. Just a quick reference, if you're using returners you, and, you, and you want the minion to get data back out, um, there's an execution module called ret that can read information that was sent to the returners, so you don't have to go around in that direction. Thank you. I, uh, and, uh, yeah, and it can grab based on job ID, based on function, or based on, uh, yeah, or it can get a lot of information on there. Yep. That, uh, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, I actually knew that was in there, and I, uh, I forgot to include it. Um, one caveat with this, uh, as opposed to the external pillar option, is if you are loading data into external pillar uh, using this kind of cyclical workflow, um, you can load that pillar into uh, you can load that data into pillar in a way that only certain minions can access it. Um, whereas, I believe that would not be true using this module. So if you have sensitive data that you need to uh, uh, get out there, um, keep that in mind. Um, and I forgot to mention, uh, if you collect data via salt mine, 
um, that data is available to all minions. So again, be mindful of data security. Um, so that information that you're collecting is available to everybody uh, that requests it. So if it's not sensitive, great. If it is sensitive, you might want to use something a little bit more complicated like this. So <clears throat> let's talk about uh, events. I'm going just a touch fast. Um, Salt has an event bus. Um, you can, uh, Salt, uh, Salt uses that event bus internally for a, a variety of things, and uh, you can tap into it in your stuff as well. So um, here's, a, here's an example of a module. Um, it's uh, the, the event module, and uh, that gives you direct access to uh, being able to fire events. Um, you, can, uh, you can fire uh, events on the minion or the master. And uh, so the, the syntax for this is, um, is uh, just a regular salt command, which hosts you want to, uh, to execute on this command. Uh, in this case, uh, we're causing these hosts to fire an event on the master. And um, the, uh, the event that we're firing is uh, refresh pool, and uh, we're tagging this event with load balancer. So tags on events let you filter on events. So salt is uh, constantly firing events, um, and uh, this lets you, uh, tagged events lets you just look at certain kinds of events if you're interested in certain kinds. Um, so, so if you wanted to watch for events, if you wanted to do it yourself manually, um, there's a little assembly required. Uh, there's a good example in the, uh, the event documentation, or there's a, there's a script in the, uh, the tests directory called event listen, which uh, you can look at to see how they're doing. Um, and uh, uh, this is also coming soon to, uh, to Salt API. So Salt API is going to um, uh, have an, a URL, probably slash events or something that you can just uh, hit in uh, a web browser or with uh, um, you know, your favorite uh, web consuming tool. And uh, that will be an HTTP stream of, uh, of any events that, uh, that Salt is seeing come through. Um, so that, uh, uh, that will uh, make, make it a little bit easier for you to script things uh, outside of the, the Salt ecosystem or outside of the Salt master. Um, in any case, um, so that is how you would watch for events manually. So in your code, for example, if you were to create a Python file that you know, taps into your Django application, you could listen to events in there. Um, but that would have to be running on uh, the Salt Master. No, I guess you could listen for events on the Salt Minion, but there's a little less utility there. Minion has its, has its own event bus for local events. Gotcha. So, the, so it's not really playing all the events from the Master. Right. If you wanted to listen to events elsewhere, we'd have to do through Salt API. Yeah. Thanks for specifying. The, uh, the event bus is specific to, uh, to the minion um, that it's running on or, uh, or the, the master event bus. Um, so uh, so uh, Salt has a, a reactor system. Now this system, this reactor system is for Salt events. And uh, it lets you kind of automate how Salt reacts to events. And uh, you can arbitrarily run commands using the reactor system using this. So here's an example. If you put this configuration in your salt master config, you, uh, you specify the reactor section, and uh, <clears throat> you specify um, the uh, tag that you want to listen to. Is that right, Tom? Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, you specify the tag you want to filter on, and then uh, you specify any uh, SLS files that you want executed. Uh, parsed and executed when any events that match that tag happen. So, for example, uh, going back to um, our load balancer example, if you have a load balancer that, uh, that you want to refresh the pool of available web servers on certain events, maybe it's an event that you fire manually, maybe it's a, an event that you have scripted, so you've got a Python script that's running, um, and uh, it's just polling minions every so often to see who goes down, or um, something like that. I mean, sky's the limit. Um, uh, salt, uh, the, the, the SALT team and the SALT documentation uh, have, have kind of a tendency to uh, shy away from specific examples and you know, specific recommendations because SALT is so customizable and so flexible and, uh, and uh, infrastructures vary uh, so much. Uh, um, I mean, you really can do whatever you want. But for example, um, if you wanted to refresh the pool on, uh, 
on uh, your load balancer. So this, uh, this file gets executed every time uh, uh, an event matching the load balancer tag uh, comes up. And then in this event, we're actually checking to see if that, um, if that, uh, uh, that event uh, is the refresh pool event. And if it is, we're going to run, uh, we're going to do a, a high state run. So it's actually going to run the command state.high state, just like you would at the, uh, the CLI. And it's only going to run that on uh, any host names that match uh, load balance uh, or LB. Does that make sense? You can still lose by the node groups right there at the target, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so uh, there's uh, several options that can go under here, and they, uh, they, they correlate to the, uh, to the, the, the CLI um, interface. Uh, so target, target type, um, the command, and any arguments. So if you wanted arguments, for example, you would put another list item in here called arg or args and uh, specify a list in there. So uh, let's talk about uh, schedules in salt. So <clears throat> um, you can you can add functions to be run on a on a schedule uh, within salt. Um, you can do this by uh, by adding this block here, this example block, to either the master uh, config or the minion config. Uh, you can also put this in pillar. Um, pillar and um, and uh, the minion config uh, kind of get munged all into uh, to one, uh, by the way. Um, so you can you can put configuration uh, items for for either in either. Uh, but uh, so the schedule block. So uh, what um, what we're doing here is uh, we're specifying. Uh, I mean, this is obvious. Every 60 minutes, we're going to run state dot high state. Um, um, you know, which uh, might be useful if uh, if you're you're kind of accustomed to the puppet workflow of you know setting up a timer and waiting for that timer to run or um, that sort of thing. It's it's a little less necessary in uh, Salt since you can just run a, a high state uh, whenever you want. But um, I'm assuming that's every 60 minutes, the start time of the box, or every 60 minutes from the start time of the of the, of the daemon. Uh, yes. so what yeah. if I want to do it every hour, every there, hour? there are uh, additional uh, configuration options here so uh, if instead of minutes um, I were to put uh, I, I'm going to have to pull up the docs actually um, but uh, yeah you can specify that uh, oops. that is specifiable and it is it is yeah okay. so oh no And it looks like this. Okay. Um, so, like I said, this, this example is not terribly useful, but uh, what might it be useful for? Well, how about stats gathering? Salt is fast, as we've been talking about. You can run these commands constantly, all the time. Um, and uh, using returners, you can you can store the results of that uh, somewhere that uh, can store quite a bit of data. Uh, Redis might not be that place, but um, but uh, so you know we're uh, we're uh, we're collecting uptime every 60 seconds. We're collecting mem info every five minutes, and uh, we're just tossing that into uh, into Redis. So um, yeah, easy to do. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a a guy, one of our users in uh, Norway, uh, goes by XT on Pound Salt. Um, put together a fantastically cool uh, demo where he's got um, he's using Salt API to uh, to execute a Salt command. Uh, he he did this before we had the, the scheduling system in place, but uh, he was using Salt API to uh, just execute a Salt command. Um, in his case, uh, he, he went a little overboard and he was using uh, he was executing several Salt commands per second. Um, and uh, he was getting that return data back, and he was graphing it using D3. Um, so you've got this little live graph, you know, just kind of chunking along from left or from right to left. Of uh, I think he was graphing CPU info or something like that. Um, but uh, uh, that's the kind of thing that having an always-on high-speed uh, uh, communication uh, uh, infrastructure lets you do. And um, that kind of segues into uh, what's coming. Uh, what's coming in Salt. 
So in uh, insult.version.not.next, um, we, uh, we will be adding monitoring in, uh, in some fashion. Uh, we're still ironing out the details, but, um, but uh, this is uh, something that you will possibly configure in line along with existing states. So, you know, if you think about it, if you, if you specify in a state file that you want the HTTP uh, D package installed, you want the HTTP D uh, service running, why not also just add another thing in there that says, and let me know if it goes down or restart it if it goes down. I guess that's something you would do with your reactor. Um, but uh, so this, this may go in line in, uh, in existing states. Uh, it may be an external thing. We're uh, still kind of playing around with the details. But uh, uh, in any case, uh, simple to set up, uh, like setting up salt states. Um, so all of the individual components for monitoring are in place, as you've, as you've seen. Uh, you know, we've got scheduling. We've got uh, the ability to run commands all the time. We've got um, the ability to uh, shuffle data around um, to arbitrary places. So really what's lacking in terms of getting monitoring into SALT is a little glue and, um, and uh, uh, a little interface on top of that. And uh, once that's, uh, that's done, a little alerting. So, you know, something goes down, let you know in some fashion. Um, another thing that, uh, that's needed for that is uh, data resolution. Um, so at the moment, you're, uh, you're stuffing return data from arbitrary commands into these, these returners, you know, arbitrary data stores. Um, but, uh, but then you're done. I mean, you can get that data back out, but uh, if you're collecting a lot of data for a month or a year, that, that can really add up um, from, you know, a bunch of systems. So, uh, so time series data. Um, you need to uh, be able to thin and, and summarize older and older data. Um, and uh, you might just get that for free with some returners. So we don't have uh, any of these set up at the moment, but it's been on our radar and it would be easy to do. So for example, if you were to set up a returner that, uh, that wrote to um, you know, what Graphite uses, uh, the Whisper database. Um, Whisper uh, uh, has this, uh, this, this kind of uh, data thinning and data summarization built in. So as you're adding data, it's, uh, it's pushing older data um, into uh, uh, lower and lower resolutions. Um, you know, so. Uh, and sorry, what I mean by data resolution is, uh, you know, if you're tracking uptime, um, you're probably very, very interested in uh, in uh, every invocation of uh, of you know uptime uh, or, or a load system load, for example, over the last couple of hours, or the last day, or the last week. But over the last month, you know, you can uh, you can start to um, uh, care a little bit less about uh, the exact data and uh, and and instead just have you know an average or an aggregate. And uh, so the farther data goes back in time, um, the, uh, the, the l lower resolution it, it, it gets in the database. Um, yeah. So that's largely it. I, uh, I went a bit fast. Does anybody have any questions? I know it's not in place yet, but um, as far as monitoring, do you see it kind of taking a role like work and perform like Nigeos or that far enough? Or yeah, exactly. Um, it uh, it just makes sense because it just makes sense to do um, because we've got all of these components in place naturally just to, to use salt for you know normal orchestration. So for example, we've got all of these functions in place right now that can collect system data um, very granularly. Um, you know, system load, memory information, uh, that sort of thing. Um, stuff that uh, that you use day in and day out now. If if you want to check on the health of a system now, uh, but why not? throw that into a scheduler. Why not track that over time? Why not summarize that data as it gets older and older? And, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, use that for monitoring, for historical reporting, for alerting. Anything else? Any plans to develop a user interface? Thank you for asking. I can't believe I let that out since I am uh, sort of in charge of the user interface. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. That, uh, that is going to be a huge component of the user interface. Um, the user interface, uh, for, for those of you who uh, are not aware, um, there's a project called Salt API that, uh, that sits on top of Salt. And what that lets you do is uh, that lets you access the Salt master from places that are not the Salt master. So uh, external systems, um, um, you know, what, what, uh, whatever your needs are. And, and it does that by exposing 
uh, at the moment it's a REST interface. Uh, Salt API is very modular like Salt itself, so um, whatever kind of interface makes sense to throw in there, um, Salt API's job is to start some daemon that listens on a port and, uh, and that's it. So at the moment um, uh, we've got two modules in there, both of which provide different but uh, uh, similar REST interfaces. And what they do is they just start up a web server, listens on a port, and uh, takes uh, you know, REST HTTP calls um, and uh, passes those along to the Salt Master. So you can use Salt API to uh, call functions, you can use Salt API to get return data back, just as you would from, uh, from the Salt CLI. Um, and uh, so Salt UI uh, uses Salt API. It's a JavaScript um, uh, uh, user interface that, um, that uh, gets bootstrapped and then uses Salt API to communicate with Salt from there. So, um, so Salt UI is, um, is the obvious go-to place for being able to visualize uh, more readily Salt's real-time abilities. Um, the, the CLI is incredibly efficient, right? But, uh, but the CLI at the end of the day is very much a run a command, get a return, run a command, get a return. Whereas uh, JavaScript or a user interface um, lends itself much more to, to uh, that, that kind of real time um, uh, finger on the pulse of, of what Salt's doing, you know. Um, you're interacting with Salt through the user interface. At the same time, the user interface is listening to events that are coming back or, you know, just running status checks in the, in the background, that sort of thing. So, um, so for monitoring, um, the user interface is going to be huge. Um, we, uh, we, we currently have a ticket open in uh, Salt UI to add um, system graphing, uh, similar to uh, our community member. Um, that's something we want to see in Salt, in Salt UI core. You just hit a page and you start see, seeing a, a graph of CPU usage uh, uh, checking across. Any other questions? The summarization, do, you, is it, do people, a lot of people ask about that? It's something that we've looked at in the past and found that the data we save is not huge or it's relatively cheap. You know, five, we, we keep five years usually mm -hmm. the metrics and it's not that bad. I'm curious. Sure. Uh, no, and uh, so no, there's not a lot of demand. I imagine most people are in your, your situation where um, where they're just not collecting enough data for, for it to matter with you know, hard drives as big as they are today. Um, in, in some infrastructures, and, and it also depends on what you're tracking, I suppose, um, but you know, in some uh, just epically sized infrastructures, uh, you know, if they're using that to collect a, lo a lot of information, they're either going to have to start uh, you know, shipping that off somewhere um, more permanent or, or uh, reducing the resolution. But from the community, no, no demand. Um, in fact, uh, I think a, a big impetus for it is uh, just uh, a lot of the monitoring solutions have that kind of built in, so. Yeah, we use a lot of RRD and we actually, I mean, that epically large infrastructure, that, that's what we use it, and yeah, it's, it works quite well. Nice. We, um, we're kicking around adding, uh, we're kicking around uh, the idea and uh, how uh, to, uh, to add that kind of data, re data resolution to existing data stores. So, you know, if you're using MySQL, for example, um, to store this kind of data, uh, how would you decrease uh, data resolution using that? Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we'll come up with, but at least it's on our radar. Um, but it would be just as easy to, uh, you know, use something like RD Tool or Whisper. Anything else? Are your slides going to be available? Yes, I um, I'll send an email out to the uh, to the salt list. Uh, um, and uh, they're available on uh, my GitHub, so github.com slash whiting. Uh, oh, uh, slash whiting slash presentations. I'll be there. With, could you essentially then, with everything you talked about, mimic the with monitoring and everything, uh, do the same thing as a monitor does? Where if a <coughs> monitoring system detects you know, a web server all of a sudden crashed, turned off, do you attempt to turn it back on? Yeah. Um, in fact, you can do that now with uh, with the reactor system. Well, maybe. Yes, you can do that you'd, with the reactor system. You'd have to write something custom to actually do the check. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so if you were to throw a little script, you know, if you were to write a little script to do to you know call out to uh, to Salt's um, uh, runner, uh, the um, the um, trying to blank on what that module is called, um, just to see what minions are down. So if you were to wrap that and uh, see what minions are down, then uh, um, then cause something to uh, kick off through the reactor. Yeah, that's possible now. And we've got guys that are going so far as to gathering data. So 
Sorry, I'll talk louder. We've got guys who are going so far as to um, have data that's being gathered and then they're querying it in the database and reacting to it so, um, automatically such that they can detect when, say, your web tier hits a certain load or it's got a lot of Apache connections open or by any metric. I, I mean, some of the guys we've seen have done some, some pretty granular metrics. And then they actually use the reactor to, keep, to uh, make calls out to things like Salt Cloud or Salt Burke to just spin up more VMs or so that it can dynamically scale up and scale down. Or similarly detect and say, hey, this system is down, it's clearly not responding. Instead of trying to do anything with it, go ahead and spin up a complete replacement for it. So, but yeah, some of the tools around making that easier is where most of the development is focused right now. I'm glad you mentioned that, Tom. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying about uh, Salt not having much of an opinion so far. Uh, I mean, we've gotten requests for stronger opinions or examples, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, that's something on our radar and something we've uh, started to uh, to kind of address with um, um, the, uh, we've got a, a Salt States repo, uh, whose name I'm blanking on at the moment, but just full of uh, example states that you can pull into uh, to, to your environments. But uh, yeah, I mean, since everybody's infrastructure is so custom, and uh, since Salt itself is so open-ended, um, it is very, very easy to uh, you know use the reactor to fire off arbitrary commands, you know, stuff that you've written, or you know, just shelling out, for example. Any other questions? Thank you for coming. <laughs>